this is where the other side of that culvert comes out now we're able to control the runoff it'll come all down alan. through here like it should <laughs> naturally alan 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 help i'm stuck i can't get out another beautiful day in rotterdam new york and we have just stopped here and i saw this hammock and i thought i would take a second to take a break we are with alan decker decker's pondscapes and this is a smaller water feature yeah so it's kind of like a, a 10 by 12 10 by 14 in that range nice so it's uh but it's a great little spot absolutely beautiful Love the moss look at the koi happy koi look they're going to be wanting to get fed what i love about this alan is we've seen a lot of big projects for you but it's the smaller the space the bigger an impact a water feature makes and this is interesting this is kind of on the side of their house they get the obviously the beautiful hammock out here but they've actually just set up this little this little tent here and just to be able to sit here and enjoy this what i love about that is it doesn't have to be a big water feature for them to get to enjoy it Cool part about this was is back um, before we did this, they had a little preformed right there by where that Jap maple That's is how now. It started, huh? Yep, and they decided to have us come in and, and build this. So we created that hemlock backdrop so they could sit here yep, and still have their privacy. And just the way the rockwork boat goes in and the ground covers around it, and the you know the dragonflies are flying, the fish are ready to eat. This is just absolutely beautiful. How long has this been in the ground? Oh, uh, this has probably been about five, six years, right. somewhere in there. It's just a little piece of habit. Some of that sound. Now, what would a project like this run uh, from Decker's Pond Scheme? You're probably talking a 14, 15 range. We do have the, the thousand skimmer over there to house the pumps, but um, on the upper part is just basically the wetland. So it's the upflow system bog um, with the aquatic plants and everything to clarify it rather than a biofalls, just because um, we wanted that more gentle upflow here in a little bit different look, uh, make it a little wider than a biofall. Oh! And we were just driving down the road. He says, let me show you a public park that I did five, six years ago. This is gorgeous. What is the actual story of this park, Alan? Actually, this is a rose garden. So all up here is there's a bunch of volunteers that actually do this just for the community. Mm -hmm. And this pond here was probably, I don't know, back in the 50s was built. It was all cement and it was failing. So they had us come in. We actually lined it. Um, so you, did, we, you got the cement, you just put sand down. Some yeah, we put some sand down, a little insulation board along the sides. and. Um, actually just created this bog area up here to help filter this water. Well, it's, it's and, working great. That's yeah. beautiful crystal clear water. the lily the red attraction no fish no fish no, no fish. i mean well there is fish in here as you can see underneath the lilies there oh yeah there's some there's some fish the, the committee really didn't want any but uh as you can see the public just kind of does what they want <laughs> they put some goldfish in they grow grow too big 
I'm gonna tell you something I love about this. I don't see a single sign saying, don't get in the water, don't climb on the rocks. Nope. This is what kids should be doing. There's a little bit of gravel pushed off the right. line of there, and you know that it's because there's kids here right. all the time messing with this. This is how a pond should be interacted with. Look at the water quality. Here's the filtration system right here. I can actually see down here, Alan, yep, the aqua totally blocks. Aqua block. Yeah, sure. so you don't normally get to see this when we're walking around, because normally there's plants growing in there. But that's an aqua box, which creates the void space. The water spreads out through here, flows up through the gravel, and keeps the water this clear. This is kind of like an inner city area, believe it or not. So as you can see, there's a group of kids actually um, walking around over there now, but they can actually stand in this. And there was aquatic plants in here, but I'm sure they pulled it out having fun, like any uh, kid would like when we were younger. This is actually really cool, because we're in Schenectady. I'm saying right, Schenectady. Schenectady, New York, yep. Schenectady, New York. We're right down the street from the GE plant, so this is old money here. Yeah. Yeah, basically, and um, I guess the way it works is that there was an endowment left to the Rose Garden, and uh, off the interest of the endowment, they're able to maintain this property amongst all the volunteers. And wow. just, as you can see, there's a huge amount of uh, roses up there, and they have weddings here. I can't tell you how many pictures of wedding pictures are taken on this bridge. It's so awesome for me to see the aquascape ecosystem working and transforming uh, 50, 60, how old? It was early 50s that it was renovated, so it was prior to that. Wow, so, so a 100 year old public park with a beautiful aquascape water feature. Good work, my absolutely. man. This is a uh, beautiful Lake George, uh, New York. It's a vacation home. This guy lives somewhere else. Okay. How you doing? Hi, good. I'm the pond guy, Greg. Great to meet you. Steve. Steve. So this is a second home for you? It is, it'll be a primary one day. But, hey, that's, uh, that, that's there, not bad. It, I got it all fixed up. Well, for what us, a beautiful but, area. We're about yeah, it's a good setting. right by the lake here. Yeah. So this is a nice yeah. little so retreat for you. We spent half you. the year here, but uh, you know, Alan kind of transformed that whole front end for us. I heard there was a kind of a, a drainage problem or existing pond up there. That... There was a pond, a kind of a natural pond on the water flowed down off the mountain in the spring. And, um, and he said he had a, you had a couple other conjurers out there they didn't know how to fix it he came out and said you got to do this this and this they just didn't know how to how to handle it and um i saw alan's one of his trucks on the road and just seemed like boy this guy seems like he's really in this business <laughs> he no is more than that, <laughs> he is all, you know all the awards he's won and things like that yeah, artist artist of the year from uh, aquascape yep uh, that's what it was and i was very lucky the day we hooked up with him <laughs> So that's what that's the difference between hiring a professional and uh, uh, just the guy who's a landscaper. Is four different people came out here to look at this. Nobody could figure out what they're doing. Alan took one look at it, and yep, this is what you do. And uh, next thing you know, they've got this beautiful pondless waterfall out in the front. Pull in the driveway, this is the first thing that you see. There's not a single person that comes up to this gorgeous house that won't notice this water feature. L little fire pit, and that fire pit would not be in the front yard if it wasn't for this waterfall. They turned an eyesore of a water feature into a gorgeous, functioning, beautiful, pondless waterfall.
whole reason we did this is because we could never mow it. It was just high grass. So part of it was we had to control the drainage and the runoff. In the spring, when everything melted, he goes, that water was rushing through there. So everything worked right. And then it goes back into this uh, 14 inch culvert that diagonally goes across the road and back down into a municipal ditch down there. The cool part was he says all the drops and all the ripples we had, he said the water was just rushing through it. So this was where the existing cesspool kind of was? Right, so that was kind of out, it was out into here. I would say somewhere's into this range it was. And it was just like a big wet spot. So what we did is we actually dug everything up and uh, we laid fabric in there and we put some big heavy like canal stone on the bottom and then uh, carved it all back out and we put our, our pondless kit in and everything and then just had everything circulate through there. It's got underground drainage in it. I kind of calculated how much runoff would come off the road because we needed this area to kind of fill up and then go through. And this is the native stone up here because it's yeah. a different rock I have not seen it used before. Yeah. I mean, you can see like the striations and stuff in it, but it's all um, an Adirondack type rock. And uh, this is where the other side of that culvert comes out. And then as you can see, it just runs down. So now we're able to control the runoff and uh, it'll come all Alan. down through here like it should, naturally. Alan, <laughs> I'm stuck. I can't get out. Figures, Greg crawled into a hole he shouldn't be in. Right underneath here is a waterfall diffuser. They actually put moss, you can't even see it when it, you can't even see it when it's completely hidden. So right under here, the water comes in through a bulkhead fitting in the back. There's a diffuser box and it spreads the water out so you don't have a rushing like you would if it was just the pipe. Beautiful job of camouflage. want to follow along get inspired to live the aquascape lifestyle going around and seeing beautiful properties with super cool people beautiful places like this every single week and awesome water features like comment hit the subscribe button check out the links below and follow along on our journeys and then share this with the world let more people see what living the aquascape lifestyle is all about I love my job god I love my job I love my job